Quick revision video on energy storage cells. So we'll start with the essentials. Energy storage cells are what we would commonly refer to as batteries. They contain two half cells with different standard electrode potential values. The equations for half cells would always be given in the exam. So the half cell with the most positive standard electrode potential value would take electrons from the half cell with the least positive electrode potential value. The most positive electrode potential value is the positive electrode in the cell, so the cathode, and the least positive value is the negative electrode, and so the anode. And finally, there are two main types, primary and secondary. So if we look at the primary energy storage cells first, these involve a cell reaction which is not reversible. So because of that, you can only use them once. And the example I'm going to look at is the ZN-MnO2-KOH um, storage cell, which is essentially your alkaline batteries. KOH is an alkali, of course. So we're talking about double A's and triple A's, those types of batteries. So remember what we said, the half equations are given in the exam, so you don't have to memorise these. You would just need to know what to do with them in terms of overall cell reaction, and something with maybe working out the voltage of the cell. So that's what I'm going to do here. So if you remember, the most positive electrode potential will take electrons from the least positive one. So in other words, this bottom one here is going to move in the forwards direction, so left to right, and therefore it's going to force the other one in reverse. So the overall cell reaction, well, the reactants are going to be this and this from this equation, reacting with this and this. The electrons are going to cancel out anyway, so if you think about it, we're going to have two electrons on the left, two electrons on the right, so they're going to cancel, so we haven't need to multiply anything out here. So essentially, the overall cell reaction is going to look like that, and then you can see we can cancel out the like terms, so the waters go and the OH- ions go as well. The voltage of the cell, well, it's just the most positive electrode potential minus the least positive, and so therefore you get a voltage of 1.43 volts. Secondary storage cells now, so these involve a cell reaction which is reversible, so that means you can use them more than once. In other words, these are your rechargeable batteries, and the example I'm going to use is the lithium-ion battery, in other words, your mobile phone battery. So there's the half equations for the lithium ion battery, but I've presented it in a slightly different way just to tease out a few more things. We're told that this one here is the cathode and this one here is the anode. So if you remember, the cathode is the positive electrode, so that means it's going to have the most positive electrode potential value. This is the negative electrode with the least positive electrode potential value. So in other words, this half cell is going to move in the forwards direction, and this one's going to move in reverse. Quick look at the electrons. You can see we've got one in each half cell, so we don't need to multiply these out. So the overall cell reaction as the cell operates or discharges is the sum of those two half equations. So cancelling out like terms, we end up with COO2 plus lithium going to LiCO2. So obviously when your phone battery's gone flat, it means that the reactants have been used up, but we can plug it into an external power supply. So when you plug your charger into your phone, you're basically forcing the um, cell reaction in reverse, and so the reaction would just be the other way around. And so it would be LiCO2 going to Li and COO2.